What is going on? Jean Macratic with the Dr. Rises podcast. And today I invited Olivia Ponchal back to talk about elective rotations, more specifically elective rotations during your third year, and kind of picking up where we had our first video uh, where we were talking about step two and the changes that they're making and the importance of what you do during your third year um, during elective rotations. So you can actually set yourself up so when you do audition rotations during your fourth year, um, you know exactly what to expect, you know what you should be doing. And ideally, you can kind of hit the ground running and be in a very good position so you're not kind of catching up during your first audition rotation. So, Olivia, can you kind of expand on what an elective rotation is? Sure. So an elective rotation, also called a sub-internship, an audition rotation, an away rotation, all mean the same thing, is a rotation that you do during your fourth year of medical school. They're usually four weeks long. Some of them are two weeks long, um, where you go to a program that you're planning to apply to for residency, and you basically do like a month-long interview with that program. So you rotate on their service. You work in the hospital with the residents every day. Um, you take calls sometimes. Um, and you basically get a sense of what the program is like, and they get a sense, a more detailed sense of what, how you are as an applicant and how you, you know, kind of mesh with their residents, how you fit in with their program. Um, so it's kind of like a two way interview where you're getting to assess the program, but they're also getting to assess you in a more in-depth way than they can just based on your paper application. And so then during your third year, you can kind of do i say like a mini audition mm -hmm. rotation. Um, so what is that in respect to your ability to do that? And how exactly does that work? Yeah, so it varies from school to school. Um, so our school has two elective rotations, which from what I understand is more than most schools have. Um, but even if you just have one um, audition or elective rotation that you can do, um, I would take full advantage to do that in the specialty that you're planning on applying to. So um, I had two. And so I did the first one with a private practice doctor that people from my school had rotated with before. Um, I knew that if I went there that I would have a good experience because I knew people that had rotated there and had a positive experience. Um, and I did that one first because um, it was my, my first um, rotation in orthopedic surgery. And so I didn't really know that much. And it was a safe space to like ask dumb questions and make mistakes and things like that. And so I think that's a good place to, to do your first one. And then the second one I did at a residency program that I'm planning to apply to. I actually wasn't planning on applying there before I did the rotation. Um, it just kind of worked out that way and I ended up really liking it. And now it's one of my top choices for residency, um, but it just happened that way. So that's where I did mine. So then how did you go about picking that location and then actually going through the process of being able to actually rotate there for a month? Mm -hmm. So um, it kind of happened on accident for me. I was supposed to go somewhere else and then that fell through at the last minute. And then their program coordinator knew the program coordinator at the program that I rotated at. And she was like, let me email this person for you and see if they have a spot available. And so like basically like a week and a half before I was supposed to start, I got the email that it worked out and I could submit my paperwork and everything was good. And then I just went for it. Um, so that was kind of um, not probably the typical way that people do it. Um, I would recommend reaching out to the program coordinator. Um, the program coordinator is the person that has all the information on, you know, if they accept third year students for rotations, what paperwork you need to fill out, um, the dates that are available, things like that. So don't email the program director. Don't email the program chair. Don't email the residents to set up your rotation. The program coordinator is the person that you want to talk to. And not every program will take third year students. So you might have to try a couple of different places. And some might say, we don't take third years or um, right now we're only taking fourth years because we're still in our interview season, et cetera. So you might have to do a little bit of trial and error, uh, but some programs will take third years to do a rotation. And I think it's a great opportunity if you can do it. So what should you look for when you're actually trying to find a site for audition rotations or a third year elective? So I would say try to ask questions that help you understand what medical students do, especially as a third year medical student, what you'll be able to do when you're on that program. You want to get the most out of it as you can and get as many opportunities to learn as you can. So if it seems like the program just kind of has medical students stand on the sideline and watch surgeries and scrub in sometimes, while it's good to get experience scrubbing in and being in the OR, um, that doesn't give you a ton of insight to what it would be like to be a resident there. Um, so at the program that I rotated at, um, I rounded in the morning with the residents. Um, I took call. Um, I did scrub into every case. 
I also did like on the floor tasks, like removing hemovacs and changing wound vacs, doing dressing changes. And all of those little skills are things that I don't think I realized that you don't learn in medical school. Um, you think that, oh, like, yeah, like I've been in med school for two years. I know, you know, I know a decent amount of stuff, but you don't know how to do like a simple dressing change. Um, so anywhere that you can learn how to do those kind of simple uh, tasks that you would have to do as a resident is a great learning opportunity. And then when you go to your um, official audition rotation as a fourth year, you already know how to do those things and you can kind of just hit the ground running. And then, so you basically had to go with a two weeks notice mm -hmm. to your audition yeah. site. How did you set up housing? What is this housing situation all like? Yeah, so this also varies um, from place to place. Um, whenever I was emailing the program coordinator, I asked her, are there any housing options available for students either at the hospital or around the hospital? And she said that there, she emailed me back and told me that there's a resident who rents out a room in her apartment to medical students that are rotating. And so I just contacted that person and set that up. And it was really convenient because she lived within walking distance from the hospital and I didn't have my car. So it's easy. I could just walk to the hospital every day and walk wherever I needed to go. Um, so it just depends. Um, but yeah, it's something that you have to think about ahead of time uh, when you're planning your audition rotations. Um, if there's like a family member you can stay with or a friend you can stay with, that's always ideal because it does get pretty expensive if you're going to do an Airbnb or a hotel. Um, but staying with residents or using um, websites like Rotating Room, um, they'll post uh, rooms available for rent for medical students and you just kind of have to keep an eye out for that. But yeah, it's one of the challenges of audition rotations because all the data shows that the majority of people in competitive specialties at least, will match at a program that they rotated at. And so just probability wise, it would make sense to do as many audition rotations as you can. But of course there's limitations of time and cost um, that prevent you from doing that. Um, but yeah, I think it's one of the things that programs need to address or schools need to create some sort of financial support for fourth year med students that are rotating because it's such an integral part to being successful in the match. Yeah, I know. Um, I looked into this is that they have like private loan options mm -hmm. that you can during fourth year yeah. apply for because I mean, you're a physician and that's thing. But like you can't. This is an, again, another thing I looked into is you cannot get more financial aid mm -hmm. during your during any school year. Like you can't get more than what they allocate for your cost of attendance. Right. But obviously your cost of attendance does include living expenses for six months, you know, six way rotations across the country, mm -hmm. which that's an Airbnb. If you're renting a car, that's renting a car. Or if you're not driving your car, mm -hmm. um, then like, let's say you have, you know, any other miscellaneous expenses, food, yada, yada, yada. Yep. And so, you know, as you were saying, it can add up really, really quickly. And it can be a very, a big barrier to doing more way rotations. Mm -hmm. If one, you don't have, you know, financial support from, you know, significant others, parents, yada, yada, yep. yada, mm -hmm. and you can't get more loans from school. Exactly. And for students that find themselves in that position, I would recommend looking at some of the national organizations. Sometimes they'll do scholarships for fourth year students. Um, and also recently, some of the residency programs have also been offering scholarships for students to do come do an audition rotation at their program. Um, and so that's something to look into as well. And then you mentioned that you were doing kind of the, you know, day to day tasks that you'd be expected as a, a resident, mm -hmm. as a fourth year. Mm -hmm. um, what are kind of the big things that you kind of took away from it that you're like, OK, this is something that I'm super glad I did this elective rotation, that I learned this, that it's really going to help me when I'm actually going into my fourth year auditions. Mm -hmm. And so I don't look like I'm a fish out of water right. going into this rotation and just like, hi, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, all those small little tasks that I'd never done before. Um, I had had experience rotating because I did that first elective rotation and that was with a private practice doctor. So a lot of that was just scrubbing into surgery. And so I got really comfortable being in the OR, scrubbing in, being safe in the OR, um, feeling comfortable in the OR, which is also really important. Um, but on that rotation, I never did a dressing change. I never took off a cast. I never put on a splint. And so those kinds of things um, that I learned on my second rotation, I think will be invaluable as a four year, um, you're going to have to do that no matter what program you go to. Every pro every program, you're going to have to take consults from the emergency room, which means getting splint supplies ready. Um, and so just being able to kind of learn, all right, this person has 
um, a fracture at the base of their thumb. What type of splint are we going to put on? Are we going to put on a thumb spica? What kind of materials do I need for a thumb spica splint? And there's now whenever I go to the next one, I'll just be like, oh, I can, I, if I know where the supply room is, I can go get everything that I need instead of having to ask like, oh, do you want this, this, and this? It's pretty much the same everywhere. It's just, you have to figure out where the supply room is. <laughs> and then, so a third year elective versus mm -hmm. a fourth year elective, what are kind of the big differences outside of the obvious that like this is your interview for that rotation or that site? Yeah. So one way you can look at it is that doing it as a third year is a little bit more of a low stakes option because you're not, you're not actually applying that year. And so it's a, you have a little bit more room for error and you're not expected to know as much as a fourth year, say in November would be expected to know. But I didn't really choose to look at it that way. I choose chose to look at it like I'm going to go to this audition rotation and I'm going to work as hard as I can and I'm going to try to operate at the level of a fourth year as a third year. And I think that having that approach really sets yourself up for success um, and makes it so that way that program is a program that wants you to come back as a fourth year. Um, and then you you can build connections and you can use those connections to help you um, you maybe connect with other residents at other programs or get research opportunities or get a letter of recommendation. So that's the mindset that I personally took and that I would recommend. Okay. And then looking at elective rotations, comparing it to like core rotations, um, what would you say like the big differences are um, outside of the fact that you don't have to take like a comat mm -hmm. or a, a shelf exam at the end of yeah. it? Um, so that, that is a nice part of it. You don't have to take an exam at the end. So you have a little bit more time to focus on the actual work and less on, you know, doing your Anki cards and doing practice questions and things like that. Um, but, um, I, well, I obviously thought it was more enjoyable because I was like, man, I'm like doing the thing that I love doing and I get to do it every day. And that's exciting. No knock on any of the other specialties, but that's how it should be when you do your lotto, it should be the thing that makes you the most excited to go to work every day. Um, you get to see kind of what you would be like as a resident and a doctor more so than you than I was able to on my other rotations because I was like, oh, these are skills and tasks that I'm going to be expected to do as a resident. And so I want to excel at these things. Whereas, I don't know, maybe, I don't, the psych history and physical, I wasn't like, you know, jumping at the chance to be the best at that or anything like that. And so it, it's good to get the experience and to kind of see how it would, what it would be like to be a resident in that specialty. And then naturally during your core elective or core rotations, not elective rotations, you have obviously have to prepare for a shelf exam. You have mm -hmm. to prepare, prepare for a comat, depending on obviously what school you go to, um, DO versus MD. But that kind of changes your resources that you're using. So resources mm -hmm. for a comat or a shelf exam, you know, you're using Anki, Amboss, yep. you know, Pathoma, whatever you need to, to prepare for that end of that rotation exam. For an elective rotation, naturally, you're trying to be proficient at that elective rotation mm -hmm. and in that field. Yep. So what resources do you typically go for, especially more in the orthopedic field? Right, exactly. So every specialty is going to have its own resources and residents are a great people to ask for what the best resources for that specialty are. Um, specifically for orthopedic surgery, I would recommend that every student that's rotating has pocket pimped orthopedic surgery. That's basically a book of mo the most commonly asked pimp questions or questions that the attendee and residents will ask you. Um, and that's um, a good place to kind of supplement or prep right before a case. And then Ortho Bullets is like the best website in the whole world. It clearly breaks down the exposures, the risks, um, comp potential complications, um, the different, um, basically like the planes that you have to dissect through for every surgery. And so that's a really helpful resource uh, as well. Um, Nutter's Concise Orthopedic Anatomy. Um, so same as the Nutter's book that you use for anatomy as like a first and second year, except this one's specific to orthopedics and MSK anatomy. That one's a great one because you'll get asked a lot about anatomy and that's something that they expect third and fourth year med students to know. Um, and then there's one called Hoppenfeld's Surgical Exposures. Um, that one is really expensive. So if you can find a PDF version or a used version, we definitely recommend that. And then um, for videos, there's a YouTube channel called Student to Stud. Um, that is basically like a video form of kind of a little bit more in depth than Pocket Pimped because it will go through explanations and practice reading x rays and things like that. Um, that's a great resource. And then uh, White Coat Coaching also has like a ortho jumpstart boot camp kind of thing where they help you go through some of the basics of orthopedics. 
And then did you use the uh, fracture classification? Oh, yes. Handbook of, Handbook of Fractures is also a really good one. That one's a pretty dense one, um, but it's a good it's a good resource. That one I wouldn't start with um, because you'll just get overwhelmed by how much like specific detail is in there. But once you start to see more surgeries and read more x-rays, it starts to make a lot more sense. And then are there any resources that kind of touch on I guess, different surgical approaches and things that like, mm-hmm. when you're looking, you can kind of recognize and like, okay, I get this. This is kind of what they're doing and why they're doing it. Yeah. So Hoppenfelds is the best one for that. So they'll go through plane by plane, like make the incision here, cut through the gluteus maximus. And so then you can kind of, if you look at that ahead of time, then when you're in the surgery, you can kind of orient yourself like, okay, we're on this step, we're on this step, we're on this step. Cool. Um, and then I know uh, with rotations and with kind of the field in general, when you're when you're getting into it, there's kind of some unspoken things that you either ideally know beforehand because mm-hmm. you've talked to the right people, yep. um, or that you've just kind of become familiar with. Like, hey, maybe this is not the appropriate time to ask a question, mm-hmm. or hey, this is hold off on this, or don't do this, or yep. you know, you want to toe the line of being proactive but also overbearing, and you know, all of these little things that ideally you should know going into the, the rotations kind of, do you have any that you're like, okay, this is 100% what I think do yeah, or don't do. Absolutely. Um, so just top level, most basic things that honestly you would think most people just know. And like, we don't have to talk about this, but apparently people don't. And so number one, be on time. If they tell you to be at the hospital at 445, be at the hospital at 430. That's being on time and be on time every single day for the full four weeks. I'm not going to lie to you. When I got to like three and a half weeks into this rotation, I was so tired and I was just like, you know, Olivia, you've just got four more days. You've got two more call shifts. You can do this. You got to like give yourself like a pep talk in the morning, but you have to keep that up the whole four weeks. And so that's the number one thing. Um, being professional. Um, so dressing appropriately, um, speaking appropriately to patients, to attendings, to the other residents. Um, that's really important. Um, be social. Um, so whenever you're on these rotations, yes, you are working and you are in a way interviewing for the program, but you also are potentially at a place that you're going to be for the next five years. And the residents also want to see that you're someone that they would want to hang out with outside of the hospital that they wouldn't mind being on call with for 24 hours straight. So it's important to be social. So what that means is, let's say you're on call and it's you and one other resident in the call room for 24 hours straight. Don't just sit there on your computer for the whole time and not talk to the resident, right? you know, it's a great time to ask them about the program. You know, where do you live in relation to the hospital? Uh, what are some of the things that you do when you're not at work? Um, you just talk about whatever you talk about the football game, whatever, just be social and be normal. (laughs) That's what everyone always says, be normal, but it's honestly sometimes harder said than done. Um, and then also if the residents invite you to a social event, like let's say after your last day of the rotation, they're like, Hey, we're all going to go out for a drink at this bar across from the hospital. Do you want to come? It's totally fine to say yes. Um, Say yes, go, be social, but also remember that you're on a job interview, so be professional. Have a drink and then excuse yourself to go home. Don't like stay out all night partying with the residents or whatever. So it's important to be social, uh, to be on time, to be professional, um, to be prepared. That's a big one. So look at the cases that are going to be Um, in the OR the next day, look at the patients that are on the floor, what they're going to need that day. If they need a dressing change, if they need their hemovac removed, if, um, if they need, you know, anything, if they need a consult from PT and you need to call PT, like those kinds of things, kind of preempt what's, what's coming up on the schedule. Um, read about the cases, know the approaches, know the anatomy, um, know those commonly asked pimped questions before, Uh, the night before so that way you're prepared for the next day and then that really demonstrates that you care that you've taken the time outside of being in the hospital to to learn and to work and that's important and then um now looking back since you've done two of your elective rotations Mm -hmm. kind of hindsight being 2020 what is something that you either wish you would have known before starting your elective rotation or in hindsight would have done slightly differently um, I wish I would have known about the student stud videos. Um, those were so, so helpful. Um, and I wish I would have watched them before instead of kind of like, I would only found out about it. I think like the third week of my rotation, because one of the fourth years that was rotating told me about it. And I wish I had had known about it before. because I would have watched all those videos before I went on my audition rotation. 
Um, I wish I would have known about that. Um, I wish I would have known some more of those like small tasks, like how to do a dressing change and what you need and all those kinds of things and more, um, you know, splinting experience. But I'm glad that I got the experience that I did on that rotation because I feel better prepared for my fourth year rotations now. And then more experience reading x-rays. Um, you will get asked to read x-rays, even as a third year medical student, you'll probably mess it up and that's okay. Um, but just practice as much as you can reading x-rays out loud. There's like a there, we can go, that could be like a, a whole entire talk, but there's a correct way and a correct order to read an x-ray. Um, and the more x-rays you look at, the more normal x-rays you look at, the more, um, the easier it gets to identify the abnormal. It's not something that I'm still working on. I'm definitely not the best x-ray reader, um, but it's, you know, something that I try to work on and will definitely work on more before my fourth year rotations. Do you know of any resources that you can use for x-ray reading slash normal versus? Yeah, see, there's not really a good resource for that. So in some of the students who stud videos, all like pause it before they read the x-ray and they have a whole video on how to read x-rays as well. And so I'll try to, I'll pause it right before they explain what it is and see if I did it correctly. Um, but there's no, I wish there was just like a website where they would just like show you x-rays and then you would just like type in an answer and then it would grade you or something, but there isn't anything like that, um, as far as I'm aware of. Um, and then the other thing that's challenging is like, if you want to practice with your friends, like your other classmates that are applying orthopedic surgery, y'all don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. So like, I, I don't know if I'm right or you're wrong or if we're doing it correctly. And so that's challenging. Um, fortunately, um, at our school, we have a lot of, uh, people that have matched from our, our school into orthopedic surgery and um, have not only matched, but have continued to be helpful and supportive of students apply, applying to orthopedic surgery now. And so they'll meet with us and they'll practice reading x-rays with us and uh, give us feedback um, and give us a lot of opportunities to practice. And so I think that's a really good thing to take advantage of. And so kind of, you know, wrapping things up, um, looking at, you know, elective rotations, away rotations, and kind of the importance of, you know, setting yourself up to be prepared. So that way you're hitting the ground running, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. What are some kind of final words of wisdom that you'd have just for anyone that's kind of getting involved, getting started either, you know, as a first year, like what to expect mm -hmm. um, as a third year, you know, or up and coming third year, like, hey, this is really what you need to do. And then as a future fourth year um, as well, getting involved. Mm -hmm. So as a first and second year, I would say, don't worry about it. <laughs> You've got other things I think that are more important as a first and second year, um, that you need to focus on to be able to be a good applicant for orthopedic surgery. And some of that we talked about the last time that we talked. Um, and I think when you were talked about it with Jesse as well. Um, so I wouldn't say don't worry too much about your elective rotations as a first and second year, but as a rising third year, starting to decide where you're going to do your uh, rotations as a third year. Um, my personal recommendation is if you can do two, do one at a safe space and then one at a program that you want to apply to for residency. Um, sometimes people will say like, you know, aren't you worried that you might like shoot yourself in the foot and like take yourself out of the running because you're only a third year and you're not quite at the level of a fourth year. Just don't let that happen to you. Do everything in your power to make sure that you crush your rotation. It's such an op like such an important opportunity um, and such an advantage to have that experience as a third year. So you just have to crush it. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so I would do two if you can. Um, if you can only do one, uh, I would say do it at a program that you're planning on applying to because you will um, – you will get the opportunity to see what it's like to be a resident, which is a really important part of applying to orthopedic surgery. And you might decide ultimately after you do that rotation that it's not for you. And that's also important. So that's the flip side of these rotations as well. You might, it might confirm for you that the specialty is it, or it might dissuade you from that specialty, which is also something that you would want to figure out as a third year. And then for fourth year, um, leverage your third year opportunities as much as you can for letters of recommendation or for help getting an audition rotation at another program, um, utilize the residents, uh, become good friends with them. So that way they can help you, um, as a fourth year. Um, they obviously would love it if you match at their program, but they also understand that you're not just going to apply to one program and that the objective at the end of the day is to match into orthopedic surgery. And so in all my experience, they've all been super helpful, um, 
even if you're asking them about a different program. And a lot of them, they did audition rotations too and interviewed at other programs. So they can tell you from their experience, uh, a more recent perspective of like, oh yeah, I rotated there. This is what I liked. This is what I didn't like. Um, this is something that they asked me that I didn't know the answer to. So just like make sure you know the answer to it um, and things like that. Um, and then be strategic with your fourth year um, audition rotations. Obviously I haven't applied yet or matched yet. So I'm, I'm not the person to tell you whether or not my strategy is strategic. We'll find out. Um, but take into account the cost um, if you're going to drive, which is what I'm going to do. Um, you know, be smart about the order that you do your rotations in so you're not driving from like California to New York to Florida to Chicago, you know. So those are the things that people don't necessarily think about and all that factors into the cost as well. All right. On that note, what I'm going to go ahead and do is link all of the resources that you mentioned, your OP Med Twitter, which is your medical school Twitter. Um, and then thank you so much, Olivia, for coming through. Ziggy, Zeus, Daisy, for taking up all the space on these seats. Yes, I know you. Yeah. Um, and then if you haven't done so, go ahead, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one. A bientôt.